there's a specific condition that can occur with heat exhaustion that we should discuss. Exercise associated hyponatremia. So obviously anyone exercising is going to generate heat. And in response to that, people sweat, losing water and sodium in their sweat. Normally we just rehydrate with water or Gatorade and that's it. No issues, no problem. The problem comes when we look at athletes or workers who exert themselves for prolonged periods and then overhydrate with just water. This can cause their sodium levels to decrease and put them into a hyponatremic state. So the patients we're worried about are going to be anyone who has been exerting themselves or they're in hot environments for a prolonged period of time. Endurance athletes, hikers, bicyclists, manual laborers, concert goers are all great examples. So the theory behind EAH is that we have an increase in hypotonic fluids, like water, and our sodium isn't replenished to match. There are a few causes for EAH. The first is overhydration. People who drink too much water, that is hypo or isotonic, and it doesn't have the sodium to replenish what they've lost through their sweat. In someone who has healthy kidneys and not losing water through other means, we're looking at patients who are drinking more than a liter and a half an hour. On top of that, we also have a release of vasopressin, which is like an antidiuretic hormone in that it makes you hold on to water, further decreasing your salt concentration. Things like stress, pain, heat exposure, and some NSAID use can cause you to increase your AVP levels and hold on to more water. So EAH is initially going to look very similar to heat exhaustion and heat stroke. Nausea, dizziness, headache, and cramping are all common signs. The patient may notice feeling bloated, which is due to increased water retention. You shouldn't see any hypotension or orthostatic hypotension in these patients. They're fluid overloaded, if anything. If you have a weight before the patient started exercising, like uh, certain marathon or Ironman competitions like to do, you can compare that to the current weight. If the patient's hyponatremia becomes severe enough, you may start having some neurological symptoms. You might also notice some profound dyspnea. Treatment is tricky. First, you've got to figure out which heat illness you're dealing with. When comparing mild EAH to heat exhaustion, look for those weight changes and a lack of orthostatic hypotension along with a history of drinking lots of water. Treatment is going to be a very minimal amounts of fluid, preferably something that's hypertonic if they need liquids, and some salty snacks. Monitor for worsening symptoms. When comparing EAH versus exertional heat stroke, look for that severe dyspnea, and ideally we'd love to have serum sodium levels. Anything less than 135 millimoles makes us think about EAH. Treatment is going to be hypertonic saline usually 100 mils, 3% normal saline, and repeat boluses. You have to be thinking about EAH when you look at the exertional heat stroke patients, because giving them normal saline is just going to make them worse. 